back to everybody. So we established um, just the very, very basics of hypothesis testing. In fact, we haven't even tested it yet. We essentially said uh, what the hypotheses are, um, how to mathematicize a claim, and place it up credibility. So to recap, we have two hypotheses, the null, which must contain the statement of equality, and the alternative. When we set up our two hypotheses, the null will tell us how many tails and what type, so left tail, right tail, or two tail. The hypothesis that actually gets tested is the null. And so what does that test look like? Remember what we do, we start by establishing our significance level, typically 0 0.01. And that's known as our alpha. Now we need to go get a random sample, simple random sample ideally, and decide if um, our results are actually significant at whatever that alpha is prescribed as. So to do that, there are two different methods, and um, I will discuss those with you now. And so the first method is this method of p-values. So let me show you what I mean by that. So we use a p-value of a hypothesis test to decide whether or not to reject the null hypothesis. Okay, now remember, that speaks nothing of the claim. The claim could still be in either hypothesis. So this is just to decide what to do with that pesky null, okay? And so a p-value is the probability of obtaining a sample statistic as extreme or more than the one determined from our sample. Remember, we're saying, okay, let's suppose this, this hypothesis is true, then what's the probability that what we get for our sample is as extreme as it is? as extreme compared to what? Well, compared to our assumption that we get from the null hypothesis. So what does this actually look like? Well, if we have a left tail test, remember alpha is an area. P, you know what? I'm gonna use blue. I like blue. Um, P is an area. Okay, we compare areas with areas, okay? Now, yeah, P is a probability, but remember, we're using this normal distribution, right? And so we're modeling probability with area. So let's think of P as an area that we can, can, that we can compare with alpha. So if we take our sample and our P turns out to be this area, then notice that in this case, P is greater than alpha, okay? P is greater than alpha. Well, let's look at the right tail test. Let's say in this case, our P was this, okay, this area here. So in this case, our P would be less than alpha. Well, what does this tell us to do? Well, notice that our alpha has set up essentially two regions, okay? There's two regions in underneath these curves. And what I like to do is I like to call this one the fail reject the null. And then the shaded part would be the rejection region. And so over here for the second one, here's my fail reject the null. And then anything out in the shaded region would be reject. So if P is greater than alpha, then we fail to reject the null. If P is less than alpha, 
and we reject the null, okay? What about a two-tailed test? Well, we're still gonna get a P, it's either gonna sit left or right, but now we're comparing it with alpha over two. So if we're comparing, we can either look at P compared to alpha over two, right? For sake of argument, let's just say that this is our P out here. This would tell me that P is less than alpha over two, or I could think of this as two P being less than alpha. Okay, so for a two-tailed test, and again, this is two-tailed, we're going to compare with alpha over two. And so we could say P less than alpha over two tells me reject. No. Now, keep in mind that another way of thinking about this is 2P is less than alpha, okay? Or if P were greater than alpha over two, then we would fail to reject the null. Okay, and of course, this would be 2P greater than alpha, okay? All right, going on. The second method is known as critical values, okay? Now, when I say critical values, um, I'm gonna specifically, because of the test that we're gonna do, we're gonna be testing for proportions or um, means, uh, my critical values will essentially be a ZC for critical or a TC, all right? So notice what happens when when you set up, um, you, oh, I should backtrack a little bit. You might also see this as Z alpha, T alpha, or T alpha over two, Z alpha over two, depending on it's two-tailed or not. Um, I like using critical. That's my habit. Um, but if you end up using alpha, that's fine. Uh, no big deal. So you specify your level of significance. You determine if the test is left, right, or two-tailed. You find the critical value. Notice what happens here. You have an alpha, and that alpha is going to tell you, going to give you a corresponding value along that horizontal axis, along that z-axis, right? Or maybe t-axis, depending on context. So either way, you get a, you know, maybe I'll say zc or tc. Here, right, DC or TC. Um, if this is the case, notice that this area out here, right, this area is alpha. So this area out here would be one minus alpha. An area of one minus alpha, one minus alpha. And then here you get really a plus or minus, right? You get a, a negative ZC, you get positive ZC. I guess maybe I should have called that negative ZC or negative TC. Um, but either way. And so here that area of one minus alpha is centered about zero, okay? So let's take a look here. Um, we're gonna find the P value and the critical Z value. So the test statistic is 1.8. Now, you don't know what that is yet, okay? Let me just say this. The test statistic came from our sample. Whatever that was, wherever it came from, there's a sample. And when we did some computation, the z-score from that sample was 1.8. The claim is that p is greater than 0 0.2 and alpha is 0 0.01. All right. Well, Notice that the claim has this greater than, right? That tells me that we are right tailed. So I've got right tailed. And my alpha 
is 0 0.01, okay? Now, there is a critical Z that goes with that alpha. And we could find it, right? I mean, this critical Z is the inverse norm of, well, 0.99, right? That's the area to the left of whatever that critical Z is, okay? And so we could go find that. And just to re refresh your memory, let's do it. Um, let's go to our calculator here. Um, you know what, I'm gonna continue with my trial version. Um, oops. So we have, um, right, second bars to distributions. We get on the inverse norm, 0.99. That's the area to the left, right? Our right tail has 1% of the area in it, so 99% of the area is to the left. And what do we get? 2.326, okay? So we get 3.326. Two point three two six. Okay, now my z, my test statistic, is one point eight. Well, that's over here somewhere, right? My p then. Remember, p and alpha. You compare area with area. Notice that my p is going to be greater than alpha. Okay, so p is going to be that area to the right of 1.8. And so we come over to our calculator here. And we do second vars, normal CDF, the lower is 1.8, the upper, call it 10 to 99, oh, why not? And we get zero point, I'll call it 0 0.36, 0 0.036. Zero point zero three six. Okay, so there's the critical value, two point three two six. Here's the p value, point zero three six. I want you to notice something. We up above, if you go up a little bit, right? We said if p was greater than alpha, you fail to reject. Well, what do you notice here? This P is certainly greater than alpha. We failed to reject. And remember how I said that alpha creates two different regions? It creates a rejection region and a fail to reject region? Well, where's that 1.8? The test statistic, yeah, it's in the fail to reject region. So both methods let us make a conclusion. I can say, oh, my P is greater than alpha, I fail to reject. Or I can say, hey, look, my test statistic is out here in the fail to reject region. Either way, you get the same conclusion. Okay, let's try it again. Test statistic, negative 1.3. Claim is P is less than 0.4. So less than tells me left tailed. Okay, left tailed, and alpha is 0.05. So there's a total area of 0 0.05 in this tail here. My critical Z, well, inverse norm, how much area is to the left, 0 0.05. 
And so, again, come over here and we'll do inverse norm. The area is 0 0.05. And we get negative 1.645. Negative 1.645. So you can already see, right, that Z is negative 1.3. So that's like here somewhere in the fail to reject region, right? Okay. So my P will be all that area, okay? So P equals normal CDF, something ridiculous like negative 10 to the 99th up to negative 1.3, right? We just want that area to the left. And let's see what we get. So upper is negative 1.3. Zero point zero, or call it zero nine seven. Zero point zero nine seven. Okay. All right. Why don't you guys pause it and try this last one? Okay. Did you pause it. Are you back? Make sure you pause it. Okay. Let's do it. So we have a Z. Again, that's our test statistic. It's from our sample of negative 2.6. And the claim, ooh, not equal. So we know that it is two-tailed. Okay. And so I've got a negative critical and a positive critical. And these areas, right, together, Give me alpha. So the area there, well, if alpha is 0.1, I've got 0 0.05. And over here, I've got 0 0.05. Okay. All right. So let's use some symmetry here, right? If I do inverse norm of 0 0.05, that will give me. Well, didn't we just do that, right? Negative 1.645. So I've got negative 1.645, and I've got positive 1.645, okay? Now my critical Z is negative 2.6, way out here, okay? Negative 2.6. And so my p-value will be normal CDF, negative 10 to the 99, negative 2.6, 0, 1. Let's see what this turns out to be. Uh, negative 10 to the 99. And so we get 0 0.005, 0 0.005, okay. which again should make sense. We should get something less than alpha because look where our test statistic was. It was way out farther in the tail than what alpha established, right? Okay. So I realize at this point, things might seem kind of nebulous. You might be saying, well, okay, we have these hypotheses and we can find P's and critical Z's, but 
what's this test statistic? Where did that come from? Well, you'll see shortly. Um, every, every test we perform, we will get a test statistic from. What I wanted to do was just circumvent the specifics and say, okay, when we hypothesis test for a mean or a proportion, we're going to have this setup where we have an alpha and that alpha gives us some critical value. If it's proportions, it'll be a critical Z. If it's means, it'll be a critical T or a critical Z. And then our sample gives us a test statistic. From the test statistic, we could either compare that directly with the critical value, or we could use our test statistic to get P and compare P with alpha. Either way, when we do that, we then can draw a conclusion and make a statement, okay? So again, big picture, just the raw, most broad mechanics of a hypothesis test. So that what happens next is we just kind of say, okay, well, if we're doing this test, then this is our formula. If we're doing that test, then that's our formula. Uh, but the spirit of the thing stays the same. You've got this normal distribution, you've got these regions, and you figure out what to do where. Okay, so um, when we come back, we will start actually talking about specific tests. And hopefully anything that's kind of nebulous or ambiguous will sort of start to come into focus for you, okay? So for now, what you need to be able to do is find p-values, critical values, and set up your hypotheses, all right? I will see you all soon.